they are off and running at the Masters. <laughs> <laughs> That's a very good golf voice. The 2015 The Masters. <laughs> and oh, he's got about a six iron on. We have him. <laughs> you like that? You, huh? you know what? That could be your second job. How do you do? Yes. All right. Let's go out to Augusta National, the site of the 2015 Masters, from Golf World Magazine senior editor Mike Johnson. Mike, are you there? I sure am. How are you today? Thanks for joining us. They're off and running, right? They sure are. Uh, your early leader is Charlie Hoffman, who's uh, two under par. I wouldn't uh, expect that one to hold up, even if he uh, <laughs> finishes the round as the leader. Fact is, the first round leader has only won once in the last 30 years. Not only that, but the par three winner has never won, right? Boy, they haven't, but Kevin Streelman, who won it yesterday, is a winner anyway. I don't know if you know the story, but he had a make-a-wish kid on the bag yesterday. Really heartwarming thing. Really happy for Streelman who's truly one of the authentic guys out here. Yeah, that's great news. And did, did I see Jack Nicholas had a hole-in-one yesterday? He sure did. Um, you know, it was something to see. Jack hit it about 15 feet, 20 feet past the hole on number four on the part three course, trickles back into the hole. And then the other thing that people kind of missed was on the eighth hole, he almost did it again. He hit the flag stick with his tee shot. If that one had gone in, the place might have gone totally up the ground. <laughs> it's pretty hard to uh, swing a golf club with six green jackets on, though. <laughs> yes, it is. A little bit bulky there. There you go. All right, so uh, I guess the big news is Tiger's back, and you can't talk the Masters without talking Tiger. So what's the thought process down there? Well, you're right. It's almost a federal law that you have to talk about Tiger at a major championship. And I think the talk has changed as the week has progressed. When he first got here, everyone's kind of like, well, can he make the cut? Can he even play 72 holes of golf? And now as the weeks progress and we've kind of gotten a glimpse of him, played one nine-hole practice round really well, um, you know, doesn't seem to have any sort of big issues with his short game as he's practicing. And then you consider the track record. 17 starts, 16 top 25, a host of top 10s, four wins, and all of a sudden the odds in Vegas have plummeted from 50 to 1 to 20 to 1. So I think people are thinking, you know, we might see a glimpse of Tiger here. He's also got a flair for the dramatic and if anybody can do it, that, that guy knows when the cameras are on and when, when he's on center stage. Well, he does and I think Augusta National is also the place where knowledge plays a big role and we've seen some people who have the experience and the resume kind of come out of areas where they weren't playing well to play well. Yeah. Nicholson's done it a couple of times, and of course Nicholas in '86 when nobody thought he had a chance. So could Woods pull that off this week? Yeah, he could. I'm not expecting it. I'm going to call somewhere between 20th and 25th place, but I think he'll put on a reasonably good show. We are seeing somewhat of the changing of the guard, and some of the young guns are are coming up. Who who are some of the favorites in this new young group of players who's coming up? Well, I think a lot of people are focusing clearly on Rory McIlroy and Jordan Spieth, who's had a great run, and he finished second last year. But the two players I'm focused on this week are Dustin Johnson. He hits the ball a mile, 318 yards off the tee, and when he gets his putter going, he can really get it going. So he's a guy to watch out for. The other one is Jason Day. Uh, Day finished second in 2011, third in 2013, and he's put in an inordinate amount of time this week practicing five and a half hours on sunday on the back nine just around the green another four hours on monday just around the front nine green they definitely should be there come sunday what about my my favorite jason duffner he's lost a little weight has, has that ruined his golf game well you know jason's got a lot going on right i mean yeah he's got the different physique but uh you know he and amanda recently announced their split and uh, that mentally obviously has to wear on him. His golf game has not been good this year. I'm not expecting big things out of him. Just too much going on in his life right now. Oh, I didn't know that, that they, they were going to get a divorce. Speaking of family, I guess Tiger brought his kids out. And if you ever need a PR move, bring your cute, cute kids out to the golf course, right? Well, you know, kids as props works for a lot of people. <laughs> and it certainly worked yesterday. Uh, that said, a lot of people were very cynical about that, and I actually think it's genuine. You know, 
I think anyone who's a parent will want to share that moment with their kids if they could. You know, Sam and Charlie are old enough now where they can appreciate it, and I think Tiger Distel was the right time to do it. And uh, I think everyone out there looked like they were having a great time. Mike Johnson with Golf World Magazine. You Were you there to see one of the greatest sights in all of sports, and that is the honorary starters for this year's tournament? You know, unfortunately, this is the first time I have missed it in ages because I was doing a number of other radio interviews, but I watched it on the TV. Uh, Jack and Gary hit very respectable tee shots. Arnie hit kind of this low hook to the left, pull hook to the left. But it doesn't matter. You know, Arnie just came off shoulder, shoulder surgery. Everyone was just happy to see him out there. Yeah, great, uh, great stuff. Uh, Mike Johnson with Golf World. Thanks for checking in. Have a good game. Thanks so much. Enjoy the week. You got it. 729 here, Big 550 KTRS. So I have a master story for you, Kelly Jackson. Okay. So he mentioned Jack Nichols in 1986 when, when he won the Masters. Mm-hmm. We, uh, so... It, it, it's one of those times where where were you when you heard that Jack won the Masters at age 46? And <laughs> we were in college, and there was a guy playing first base named Jeff Taylor. We called him Bucket because he had such a big head. He had a bucket head. <laughs> so, so we called him Bucket. <laughs> so he's standing on first base, and we're playing a game. It's a tight game. And the coach goes out to the mound – to talk to the talk to the talk to the to the pitcher, mm-hmm. and it's a very tense part of the game. And uh, he's talking over strategy. You want to bunt? You want to hit? You want to this? That? What happens if he does this? That? And all of a sudden, the guy on the announcer in the stadium says, "Ladies and gentlemen, we've just learned that Jack Nicholas has you know won the Masters at age 46." Mm-hmm. And Bucket, standing on first base, s- starts screaming and yelling and ranting and raving like. <laughs> He's playing in the game. And the coach looks over to him. He's like, what are you doing? And he's like, Jack Nicklaus just won the Masters. <laughs> I never forget that. I was like, wow, this is a strange place. <laughs> <laughs> 731. Here, big, 731. Big 550 KTRS.